Welcome back everyone to the as of yesterday, now publicly known, decimated Brickitect Studio. You don't know how many times I tried saying that. Why do I feel the need to make everything so difficult? Because it's not. This is easy. I'm cleaning up this place. It's simple as that. And thanks to a very inspired Mrs. Brickitect who decided to take our front room, which you guys may have seen in our old videos as Clark's Playroom, a room of Lego artwork, just kid stuff everywhere, now has become a proper sitting room and it actually looks really nice. And because of that, I was donated this lovely bookshelf that you see behind me. While the shelf will play a major role today, what this video is actually about is how I used to organize my Lego sets and how I do it now, because I think my new system's a really good one and I wanna share it with you. There is some viewer discretion advised before we enter the missing pieces storage room of doom. It's a little crazy in here, so brace yourselves as we go into what is possibly the most disorganized Lego storage hoard of all time. If you have a worse one, let me know. Uh, but let's go over to past. This is the backlog. I'll give you a little tour here. Backlog action. Some built sets. We're going to be, these are going to be moving. We got some more backlog up here. We've got my old way of storing Lego sets in here. And I'm going to try to find one that I can easily access. Maybe, um, geez Louise. How about, we'll just pick a small one. I fear for my life in here. So let's go back out to the studio and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We made it. Come over here to my now clean coffee table. I told you guys I did some work yesterday, Whew, clean. This is how, until I ran out of space the first time, how I stored my Lego sets. I would keep the box in pristine condition, which was very important to me, opened on the left side because that's the way it's done. Fight me. And then inside there, you would have the manual and you would have a bag of all of the pieces from the set. So this was like a Lego library. You'd go in, you pick your box just like I did. You would dump the pieces out, you'd have your manual, and you could build it just like the day you bought it. Only difference being is that the set was open from the left side once again. This system worked and it was great until I ran out of space. Then I realized these were the problem. These boxes that I love so much, they were causing me a lot of grief because they take up a lot of volume. When you compare the volume of this, although this is a bad example, I should have picked a bigger set. I should have picked Ninjago City Gardens. That's a good example. Usually a box is much bigger than the contents inside because they want to make you feel like you got value. When you drop $400 on a Lego set, they want to give you a box so big you got to like carry it out of the store with like six people, even though there's only this much Lego inside. You got to feel like you got value. So all that space is being wasted and I realized that there's a better system and I'll use this set to demonstrate that. To do this, I got to take you over to another dangerous part of the studio, Bar Attack, which is kind of covered on stuff. If you guys sent me mail, I'm, I'm getting to it, I promise. Under here is a part of my system. In fact, we have, we've got lights, believe it or not. I need one of these. This is a sheet protector. I'll put that there for safekeeping. I need one of these. That's a Sharpie marker. This, this is a hefty storage bag. And those three things are my new Lego storage system. Assuming everyone's still with me, we're gonna take our hefty bag. I like the ones with the slide top on them. I like them a lot better than these ones that you, you gotta open like this. I think this is Ziploc. So Hefty, if you're watching, sponsor me. What I do is I take my Sharpie fine point marker, if you're trying to buy them. I bought a bunch of them on Amazon. And on the front of this bag, before I put the pieces in, because spoiler alert, that's what's gonna happen. These pieces are going in here. I write the set number. And once again, left-handers unite. I write 40409. And then I just write the set name. In this case, it's Hot Rod. I debated whether I should write what theme it's from or the year. I kind of do wish I would have wrote the years on them because when my organization really kicks off, I'm going to want to know that, but I could always look that up. So now very simply, you're going to take the contents from this bag. And I'm glad that I did it this way because it's not changing too much. It's just changing a little, at least in this regard. You're going to dump those all in there. You got to try to get at least one piece on the ground. If you fail at that, just drop it. And then it's a brick protect video. You put those in there, you seal it up, and now you have your bag labeled 40409 Hot Rod. Part one. Part two, just as easy. You're gonna take your manual, you're gonna put it in there like that, and this becomes our new Lego storage solution. But where do these things go, you may ask? Well, these are my three ring binders full of all kinds of various Lego sets, all labeled by what they are. So for example, this one's Crater Expert. So inside here, you got all your Crater Expert sets all in order from set number low to high. Let's start a new one. This will be for 
promotional Lego. This is where things get a little fun. We take that piece of paper out of there. I also tend to take these stickers off because no one in Lego likes stickers. And I take my brother label maker, we turn that on, and then I'm just gonna type out the word promos for this. You can type anything you want as long as you will be able to decipher it in the future. We're gonna click print. That's the most satisfying part. And then you get to go like that. So now we have a label that says promos. One is gonna go on the front right here. And you probably guessed it. The other one is gonna go on the back like that. Inside here, crack that open and we put this inside, just like that. So now we have one promo set inside here and it's the hot rod. Next thing, we're gonna come back into the most dangerous place on earth. We're gonna step over the Home Alone house, come back to a drawer back here that says, you guessed it, promos. We're gonna drop that inside there. And this is my new system. These are where all the sets go, as you can see. They're all labeled by whatever theme they are. Even Overwatch has one. Marvel superheroes, some of them have mobiles, but I have all these back here. Inaccessible because of other older Lego sets that came from our old house. We're gonna be working on that. Now that we got all that out of the way, we get back to where we started this video with my lovely new bookshelf, and now we have something to put on it. So that's gonna go on there like that, along with all the other ones that I showed you back in the storage room of Doom. They're gonna line this thing up beautifully. That is if I had a place to put it. I can't help but think this would be a wonderful spot where I have those tools up there and miscellaneous stuff and camera equipment and toolboxes. Wouldn't it be great to have all of my stuff lined up right here so you can grab your manual, grab your set, go out into a place where you can actually build it and enjoy your life? Wouldn't that be amazing? That's what we're gonna do. I just have to get this out of here. This is absolutely one of those situations where things are gonna get way worse before they get better, but sometimes a little bit of pain is necessary in order to accomplish your goals, and my goal lies within. So wish me luck. You guys don't know how long it's been since I've seen an empty shelf back here. It's so tempting. I wanna fill it with stuff, but I can't. This has to come out of here. How that made it out with nothing falling is beyond me. <laughs> this shelf's actually going to have a purpose outside. I'm gonna use this to store some outdoor stuff on under our deck. So this will have a life just not in the house. And I think ultimately when I get done with the storage room in there, I'm actually gonna have a surplus of quite a few of these. This is actually what things look like when we moved in. There was nothing. <laughs> it was, it was, oh, those were the days. But now I have a spot so we can shelf it up, baby. I don't want to give an empty wall too much time because you might start getting ideas. Got to fill it up. Luckily, it's not too heavy. Look at that. That's got to be the nicest part of this entire room, but it's missing something. <laughs> it falls over on me. <laughs> Dead. The news article about man dying in Lego storage hoard. You guys would love that one, wouldn't you? But yeah, we're gonna put all of these ones on there too. And this is gonna free up a whole nother shelf, which is kind of amazing. After a lot of carrying and even more sneezing, my Lego manual shelf is complete. Well, not fully complete because there's still space on it. And of course I still have the area under here that we can fit two more rows if we get those aligned properly. But I was just thinking as I was bringing this out here, this isn't even everything that I've built since we lived here. This is when I ran out of space. I started doing this system and you can see how much this filled. And this thing's probably about half full right now. And I still have to go through, basically beginning of 2020 all the way back to when I started this channel, I have to do this system with, and it's gonna take forever. But it will be so nice, because this is gonna be cleared out. I could probably fit a whole bunch more of these. If we got this center section kind of set up where it, where it was like this back to back, so like one's facing that way, one's facing this way, all of this could be converted into that, and more of this. And I just love this. Like you want to build a Ninjago set, there's your Ninjago sets and alphabetized, your Ninjago manual is perfect. Some of you are probably wondering about the boxes considering how much priority I put in them in the past and I wish I could give up on them, but I can't. So what I do is I flatten them out sort of like that, like this here. And then we walk it back here and I showed you this earlier in the video. So you're gonna, you're gonna love this, but that's all my boxes right there. I don't quite have the courage 
to throw these away so I just been flattening them all and putting them in here and I shouldn't be doing this because it's just such a gigantic waste of space look at the square footage that's taken up I need to just take this to the recycling place and forget I ever owned them but speaking of forgetting things forget this shelf look at that it's freed up I just have some things to break down here which I'll be doing and then we can get this out of here and that gives me a couple feet of space or Maybe I could put something on there. We'll see. I think it goes without saying this is far from the conclusion of the Brickitech storage wars. This will continue on for quite a while. And I saw a lot of people that were encouraged by this in the comments and excited to see what happens and come along with me on my journey. And I hope you're one of them because this is what we're going to be doing for a while. But I'm going to try to sprinkle in a little bit of fun here and there too. And it's not all going to be work, but man, it does feel really good when you can look over here into a spot that was just housed with just crap. Now it's your Lego crap. Feels good. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll see you all in the next video.